As we said Thursday, we closed with the biblical uh, requirements for a human uh, peacemaker. And we studied, we closed Thursday night studying from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 1 through 6, where the Lord gives us the requirements. He says, judge not, lest ye be judged. For the same measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you again. And we, one of the things that we did was we took the time to explain what the Lord was saying and what he wasn't saying. You know, even people who are not saved now, if they know nothing else about the Bible, they may not be able to quote anything else. They can quote Matthew 7 and 1. You know, the Bible says, judge you not. And um, they may not know that it's Matthew 7 and 1, but they know it. it's in the Bible. Isn't it in the Bible somewhere over there, somewhere around the corner? Judge you not. It's got to be in the Bible somewhere. And, and they think uh, that, it, that the meaning of judge you not is what the world has assigned to it. And I said Thursday night, I think it bears repeating here, the Bible is the only book uh, in existence that we approach the way we approach it. All other books that we read, we read those books to understand, to gain the understanding and what is to be taught from that book. Whatever the book is about. If it's about dogs, food, sports, exercise, whatever. We read that book to learn from that book. We do just the opposite with the Bible. We read the Bible and then apply meaning to it ourselves. When you read God's word, stop trying to make God's word fit your agenda, narratives, or your goals. You read the Bible to find out what the Bible says. When Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged, first of all, to judge means to come to a conclusion without knowing the facts. Without knowing the facts. If a person is a liar, if a person is um, a, a murderer, if a person is, uh, has robbed a bank, person lied or they killed someone unlawfully or they robbed a bank and you turn around and call the person who lied a liar or a person who robbed the bank a bank a bank robber or a person who unlawfully took someone's life a murderer you have not judged them you have told the truth because that's what the definition to that is see the world tries to use judge not to, to, to mean that you can't call a thing what it is that's not what Jesus was saying at all. To judge is to come to a conclusion without a fact, without knowing the fact. He said, judge not, lest ye be judged. And then he, he even spoke of standards. He says, for the same measure you meet, that is the same fixed standard that you apply to others, that standard will be applied to you. That's, that's nothing deep about that. That makes sense, right? That makes sense. Uh, we all believe, we all hope that everybody feels this way about the stoplight. We all hope that everyone, when they see the red light, we all hope that everyone uh, 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 accept the fixed standard that that means stop. And, the, and when we see the green light, we accept the fixed standard that that means go. And the yellow light, uh, the fixed standard that that means speed up. <laughs> no, slow down. <laughs> Am I right about that? What if, what if people decided that the standard, like the red light, it doesn't apply to them? It just applies to everyone else. Can you imagine what it would be like? And from time to time, people behave that way, and the results are tragic. So he says, whatever measure you meet, whatever fixed standard you apply to others, it shall be applied to you. And then he asks a question. He says, why beholdest thou the twig or the the speck or the moat in thy brother's eye, and you fail to see the two by four beam in thine own. And notice what Jesus did. For those of you who believe that all sins are, all sins are equally sin. But there are some people who don't believe that, well, no one sin is any worse than the other because the Bible says all have sinned. All sins are equally sin. 
equally wrong. All sins are sins. But Jesus just right here called one sin a mo. And called the other a bean. If all sins are equal, if the, if the weight of all sins are the same, then how does one become a moat? And how, do other, how does the other become a two by four? All, all disobeying the law is law breaking. But there is such a thing as misdemeanors and there's such a thing as felonies. There are degrees. There are degrees. There are degrees. And so uh, he, he argued, his argument was, if you have a worse thing going on in your life than another person, how can you, if you got much worse going on in your life, correct the person whose situation is not as sinful as yours? You're drunk, and the other man took a sip. And the drunk is telling the man who took a sip of the liquor, you going to hell. <laughs> now, he's telling the truth, but, but you're drunk. <laughs> you're not the one. Let, let somebody sober <laughs> tell the occasional drinker, don't do it. Amen. For every drunk starts out as a social drinker. Amen. And the Bible says, look not on wine when it is fermented, much less drink it. All drunks. Started out cool with it, social drinkers. But you, you can accept what I just said from a sober person, but you couldn't accept that if I'm standing here. <gasps> Y'all, you know, we ain't supposed to drink. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's what he's saying. You, you got a beam in your eye. Before you, can, before you can get the mold out of mine, get the twig out of mine, remove that beam from your own. Now, we know that he wasn't saying that you're not supposed to make judgments at all because he says, give not that which is holy uh, to the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine. So Jesus, and he wasn't talking about the canine. He's talking about people. He says, you, either, you even got to know who to witness to and who not to. See, that's why witnessing has to be a spiritual thing. Well, I'm just going to witness to everybody I see. No, I don't suggest you do that. I suggest you let God, the Holy Spirit, speak to you. And when the Lord leads you, because the Lord knows whose heart is ready to receive what you have to say. See, because if the person is in a swine position uh, uh, spiritually, then you are casting your pearls before the swine and you will be unsuccessful. Some people you can't teach them because they're not ready to hear. And it takes God, the Holy Spirit, to work on your heart. Are you following me? Are you following me? So Jesus says, in order to be a peacemaker, one who brings peace to others, but not simply one who brings peace to others, the peacemaker is one who is the recipient of God's peace. And that, that peace is a condition of peace that God, Jesus brings a believer to that they keep regardless to outside circumstances. The peace is a peace that comes as a result of their relationship with Christ. Even when things are not the way you want them to be. Even when things are not going according to your plan. Like the choir said, we're not going to wait until the battle is over. We're going to shout now. There is a peace that the believer should have even when the, rest, when the rest of the world around that believer is in torment and in turmoil. That's the word I'm searching for. Turmoil, that believer should still have peace. And then when the believer's peace is disturbed, the believer uh, ought to know what to do to get back in that peaceful place. Because, see, life can disturb your peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Say what you will or may. Life throws zingers at everybody. They're curveballs that you don't see coming. Amen. And when those things happen, it can leave you rattled. But the believer doesn't remain rattled. The believer doesn't have to turn to artificial stimulants in order to function. The believer doesn't crack. Believers don't lose their 
minds. Honey, I almost lost my mind. That's one of the most popular statements now. I could have lost my mind, almost lost my mind. I've been saved 41 years. I have not almost lost my mind. I've been through the fire and through the flood. But God keeps my mind. The Bible says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. He's a mind keeper. Have I been worried? Yes. Have I been afraid? Yes. Have I been disturbed? Yes. Have I cried? Yes. Have I been, oh, at the bottom? Yes. Have I had a bout with depression? Yes. But I, praise God, thank God that I have a testimony that he's kept my mind. Do anybody or anyone else have the same testimony? Preacher, I was desperate for a minute. Dejected for a minute. But God. Kept my mind. He's a mind keeper. Yes, Lord. So, to, in order to be a peacemaker, you have to first have received God's peace. Then the peacemaker takes the peace that the Lord Jesus has given them and the peacemaker distributes God's peace to others. Now our Lord is the personification of a peacemaker. Jesus, the matter of fact, Jesus is our peace and a peacemaker. Let's look at the scriptures for a minute. I'm, 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 we're going to go somewhere. Were you, were you all bad with me just for a few? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2. I want to just show you this. Ephesians 2, and we're going to begin reading at the 14th verse. It starts out with a, verse 14 starts out with something powerful. It says, for he is our pre, our Peace, irene is, is the Greek word there, which means the absence of strife and turmoil. Praise the Lord. You don't need to turn into wine, women, songs, drugs, and all that to get out of strife and turn, turmoil. Turn to Christ. Jesus is our peace. Do you see that? For he is our peace who hath made both one. Now the both here references Jews and Gentiles. All right? Jesus, when he died on the cross, he made both one. And look at this. For he is our peace who have made both one, who have, who have broken down, look at this, the middle wall of petition that was between us. Now, here's what's interesting. The middle wall of petition was a balustrade that was erected in the temple. And uh, on this balustrade that was in the temple, in the temple court, Solomon's temple, went from Solomon's temple to Zerubbabel's temple, went from Zerubbabel's temple to the days of Christ and the days of Paul. It was called Herod's temple. Uh, that temple today and that location today, there is a mosque there the Dome of the Rock Mosque, an Islamic mosque is erected in the place where Solomon's temple used to be. The Antichrist will find a way to get the Muslims, he will either destroy or get them to give up those sacred, sacred grounds, destroy the Dome of the Rock Mosque, and rebuild the Temple of Solomon. And then when he rebuilds the Temple of Solomon, the Antichrist then will sit in the rebuild Temple of Solomon and tell the greatest lie of lies. He will then declare himself to be God. Now we see the work of the Antichrist, Paul called it the mystery of iniquity, already at work because there is an attempt in the world to, uh, to make all religions one. 
to convince us that there's nothing special about Christianity, you know, the Christian, okay, that's Christianity, postmodernism. Christianity, that's one way to God. Islam is another way to God. Uh, uh, Buddhism is another way to God. These are all separate paths to the same God. That is not true. But see, that's the, that's, that's the Antichrist. See, because he's going to, uh, once he gets in, in power, he is going to cast down, outlaw, and speak against all pre-existing religions, including Christianity. And people are going to give up their religion and follow him because uh, they, they will already have been conditioned to believe that there's nothing special about our religion anyway. I was watching this morning on the news. Um, Anthony Hopkins, the actor, uh, uh, had a terrible drinking pop problem in the 70s. Alcohol was about to destroy his career. While going to AA, he heard an AA person say, why not trust in God? So Anthony began to trust God. And in trusting God, he didn't accept Jesus as his savior. He, he just trusted God. And in trusting in God, uh, it, it dried up his thirst for alcohol. So uh, that's, that's good news. So uh, what they did was, on the show, they brought in to comment on this thing that happened to Anthony Hopkins. Uh, uh, four uh, religious leaders. They brought in a imam. They brought in a priest. They brought in a Protestant uh, person. And they brought in a rabbi. And all four of the men talked about how wonderful it was and, and how the people should believe in, in, in God and uh, that, that, that the belief in God is a good thing. And all four of them uh, agreed upon that. And, and as I listened to them, with my sanctified, Holy Ghost feel, Church of God of Christ, baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues with uh, a mighty burning fire, having read the Bible, well, as I listened to them, I looked at them and I said, that is Antichrist. For not one of those ministers mentioned Jesus. They all spoke of, you know who they spoke of? They spoke of, uh, the God in Athens. Wow. Paul says in Athens that was written on, the, uh, on an altar to the unknown God. The God they talked about had no name. The God they talked about had no religious system. So now you got, you got major world leader, leaders agreeing and talking about God as though they're all talking about the same person. Well, Jesus said that that's Antichrist. Mm -hmm. That's Antichrist. That's Antichrist. And I said, Lord, I would have loved to have been on the panel because I would have said the same thing that they said, except I would have added, you know, the God of the Bible. God of the Bible. God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because it's important to me that you know what God I'm talking about. America, in America now, our country, there's over 2,004, 2,003 different religions. So when you talk God in a secular setting, now if I talk God right here, well, you know who I'm talking about. I'm in a Christian church. I've, I've, I've positioned the cross where every shot, as I'm standing here, you see the cross behind me. So it's a good idea. You, you, you pretty much know I'm talking about the Christian God. But if I'm at a ball game, if I'm downtown, if I'm at the Capitol building, if I'm on the street, then I need to identify the God that I'm talking about. The God who we serve is the God of the Bible, God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the only way to the Father. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come up to the Father but by me. No Muslim man. No uh, man worshiping through Judaism. No man in any religion. You cannot get to God the Father except through Jesus Christ. Now why do you believe that, preacher? Because that's what Jesus said. John 14 and 6. Use a definite article, V. He didn't say, I am a way, a truth, and a life. No, V, 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 V. Amen. And I believe him. And he said, also, uh, he said, 
uh, Matthew 14 and 6 says in John 10, everybody else who claimed before me, who came before me and claimed to be messiahs, claimed to be the way, said they are thief and a robber. And the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, the real deal, that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Now, I believe that. I don't believe you can be a Christian and not believe that. I don't believe you can experience Christ and still believe there's another Savior. I know you can't read the Bible and come to that conclusion. So back to my point, in the temple, that was in the balustrade of of Herod's temple, which was Zerubbabel's temple, which was Solomon's temple, which will be rebuilt. <laughs> that was a, uh, an inscription that said this, no foreigner may enter within this barricade which surrounds the sanctuary. Anyone caught will be killed. That was the middle wall of petition. Gentiles knew they couldn't go any further in the temple than that. They had to stop. Jews could go on in, go deeper into the chambers, worship the Lord, and go into inner courts and be blessed. But the Gentiles could only go into the court of the Gentiles. Jesus came and died on the cross for everybody. Gentile and Jew and made it and aren't you glad and fix it where all of us have equal access to the Father. Amen. Look at what he did. The Bible says uh, that he removed um, uh, the middle wall of partition. Verse 15, having abolished it in his flesh. That is, he when he died. When he died, he took that away. In his flesh, the enmity, even the laws and the commandments contained in the ordinances to make in himself of twine, of two people, Gentiles and Jew, to make of twine one new man, so making peace. He fixed it where all people, hallelujah, could know the Father, be saved and serve him and walk in peace with each other. You're talking about a peacemaker. And that he might reconcile both Gentile and Jew unto God in one body, that is the body of Christ, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. When he died, we all was given equal access to God the Father. My God, you ought to take advantage of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spend another day lost knowing that Jesus fixed it where I can serve, I can serve a God where I don't have to be a second class citizen in him. I can serve a God where he hears my cry just as much as he hears the cry of a Jew, just as much as he hears the cry of a white person, just as much as he, he hears the cry of an Asian. He hears my cry as well and he hears their cry just as much as he hears theirs. He loves us all. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? And that he might, that he might reconcile both unto God. Verse, verse 17 says, And he came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, the Gentiles, and to them which were nigh, the Jews. Uh, for through him we both, Gentile and Jew, have access by one spirit, the Holy Spirit, unto God, unto the Father. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Now therefore ye, both Gentiles and Jew, are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and uh, with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom 
all the buildings fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. The, now the saints, uh, we call, we are now the new holy temple. We don't have a middle wall of petition. All of us can praise God. And see, one of the things I love about biblical Christianity is that it allows people to keep their culture. This, this, this is kind of boring, but I want you to hear me. It allows you, see, because one of the challenges that took place in the early Christian church was the Judaizers. See, Paul understood this. Paul understood that the only thing Gentiles needed to do to know Jesus was to accept Jesus as their Savior, live holy, and walk upright, that they did not have to become proselytes, that the Gentiles didn't have to become Jews to serve the Lord, that the Gentiles could, could sing like Gentiles, shout like Gentiles, worship like Gentiles, and not have to act like Jews to, to get into in, in, the, in the presence of the Lord. And, and sometimes uh, there is an attack on culture. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, we were told back in the late 80s and uh, throughout the 90s that we've shouted too much and we holler too much and, oh, the way we lift our hands, that ain't the right way. You got to lift it this way and you, you got to get, you can't clap like we clap, can't dance like we clap because the way we do it is not the right way and that we got to shift and take and become who we're not when the Lord never required that. He said, you, if you if praise me the way you praise me. Long as you, you know, long as you're not praising me in a way that's that's against scripture, that's right. Amen. He, cause the Lord made people, and that's the beauty of Christianity—a uh, beautiful kaleidoscope of people, colors, and we worship the Lord. And and uh, I think about me and my brother Steve Noble. Uh, praise the Lord, love each other. And 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 Steve and I, when we're on the radio in different places, many times we sit back, we sit across from each other, and uh, and. Uh, I admire his whiteness in Christ. He admires my blackness in Christ. And we celebrate each other in Christ. I don't try to be Steve, and Steve doesn't try to be me. And we love each other in Christ. He called me his slightly older brother uh, uh, from another mother and, 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 and better looking. I call him my slightly younger brother from another mother and better looking. That's my brother. And we worship Jesus and we glorify God. And uh, you know what? The Lord will hear my prayer just as fast as he'll hear Steve's. And the Lord will hear Steve's prayer just as fast as he'll, he will hear mine. And I don't, have to, I don't have to approach God and pretend to be Steve. Steve don't have to approach God and pretend to be me. Why? Because the Lord removed that middle wall of partition and made peace. My God, in, every, in, in Christianity, every believer is an equal citizen in the kingdom. Can I get a witness? You all don't like this kind of preaching today. Praise the Lord. Uh, uh, but I, I'm telling you, you know, uh, sometimes we feel that we're maturing when we abandon our own sound. That's not, that's not the case. You have to be who God made you. And then we all come together and lift up Jesus. Jesus is our peace. Jesus is our state of untroubled, undisturbed well-being. Hallelujah. The peacemaker then is the one who brings peace. Jesus said in John 14 and 27, My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world give I, I give peace, give I unto you. Jesus is the peace giver. This peace as a messianic blessing is, is the state of being, of being which is brought on by the grace and the loving mind of God, which stress, uh, which the stress of life can't remove. I have something that the world can't take away. Hallelujah. And that is the peace of God. This is why Christ's message is called the gospel of peace. The Bible says, having your feet shod, that is your foundation. John, uh, Ephesians 6 and 15, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And I'm telling you something today, there is a peace. According to Philippians 4 and 7, that passes, that surpasses all understanding. You don't even know why you're at peace yourself, but you have it. 
for everything going on. Everything's happening. Everything's uh, shaking around you. And yet, there you are saying, uh, saying to yourself, I got a feeling. Everything is going to be all right. I have a thought. I have a belief. I, I, can't, I can't even describe it to you. But there, there is a settledness in me that somehow, some way, this thing is going to work out. And then if it don't work out, you'll still be all right. Have anybody ever experienced uh, uh, didn't work out? Yes, sir. I want to see you wave your hand if you've been through didn't work out. It didn't work out. You waited, you waiting, but it didn't work out. You, you, you wanted it, but it didn't work out. You, you thought that it was going to happen, but it didn't work out. Didn't you survive it anyhow? Praise the Lord. Didn't the Lord come in and bless you to live and see another day? Look at you. You're here today with the testimony that I was disappointed by God came in and strengthened me ah, and told me it's all right I got something better for you God almighty isn't it wonderful to know that when it doesn't work out when it don't go according to plan God just comes with another plan and he comes with a better plan somebody ought to shout better better Have you ever been in a situation where you knew that you had plan A and your plan A didn't work and you were so disappointed only to see that God's plan B was better than your plan A and you're so glad now that it didn't work out. You're so glad, you're so glad that you didn't marry that Negro. You're so glad that you didn't get hooked up with that crazy girl. You're so glad that you didn't buy that house. You're so glad that you left that car where it was. You're glad because God had something better. Somebody shout something. Oh my. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds by Christ Jesus. Somebody shout, Keep me, Lord. He's a keeper. Oh, yes, he is. If I know nothing else about him, I know this. He will keep you if you keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Bible says in Philippians 4 and 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me. Paul said, the things you've seen in me, do and the God of peace shall be with you. Good God Almighty. Isn't that amazing? The God of peace will be with you if you follow the instructions as you, as you have been taught. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. You don't mind if we turn to the scriptures, do you? It says, and the very God of peace sanctify you entirely. And I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's the God of peace. And then I heard uh, the question asked in Job 34, uh, 29, and the B clause says, when he giveth quietness, who can make trouble? The answer is no body. When God steps in, you know what Jesus said? Lying there in the ship, they woke him up. Carest thou not that we perish? How canst thou lie asleep? Get up! The disciples said, Jesus, Jesus got up from the bow of the ship. Walked out there and saw the storm. And uh, I heard him when he said, peace, be still. All of a sudden the wind stopped blowing. Waves calmed down. Dared the lightning to flash. Thunder wouldn't say a word. The sky cleared up. And I heard the disciples say, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey his voice. Aren't you glad today that you got that man on the inside? Who's got so much power that he can speak to your life. 
speak to your situation at any given time and just say peace and the storm stops raging and the fire stops burning as a matter of fact somebody ought to get excited today because the only reason that the storm has been raging is that the storm is serving God's purpose it's doing what the Lord wants done in your life but when Jesus get tired of it when Jesus said that the winds have blown long enough when Jesus said that the storm had blown long enough Jesus will say peace be still and that storm will stop so if you're in the midst of a storm you ought to praise the Lord and say the Lord is still making me it's working out for my good but I'm I'm just around the corner I may be the third in line I may be tenth in line but just right up the up ahead there there is my peace be still yeah, yeah, Lord, you're to give him praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him in the midst of your song. Oh, yeah. Want somebody to shout, he comes. Somebody shout, he comes. The ocean. Thank you, Jesus. Even if there's a storm going on, he knows how to calm the ocean. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let me, let me, let me, we got to go to Rock, Roxborough, so I won't finish today, but I just want to tell you that when you become a peacemaker, peacemakers don't patch up. Peacemaking is not a patching up on compromise that will ultimately break in pieces. It's not, we, it's not that we agree on sin to get along. The peacemaker stands for God's truth. It would be easier for me, I'd get along better in this city with many of my brothers and sisters of a darker hue if I just didn't cry loud against perversion. My brothers and sisters, some of those in a certain political party would like me better if I just didn't preach against abortion. Hallelujah, we would have peace if I would just walk away from insisting that a man is supposed to marry a woman and a woman is supposed to marry a man. I know how to get in with some of these people. The Minister's Alliance would like me better if I just keep my mouth shut on certain things. Oh Lord, and there are some of you would be would say amen better if I just toned it down a bunch, just a little bit. But oh, oh the peacemaker is not a compromiser. You have to stand on God's truth because if you stand on the truth, the truth will hold you up. College students, you got to stand on the truth. I heard Paul say in 2 Corinthians 13 and 8, he said, we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Do I have anybody here who is for the truth? You're for the truth truth even if the news is not you're for the truth even if the entertainment industry is not for the truth you're for the truth even if black lives matter and the woke movement and all of these five percenters and all of these groups are not for the truth who still believes that the bible is right I was talking to a young lady yesterday and I said, well, what about the Bible? She said, oh, I don't believe the Bible. I said, that's your problem right there. But I don't want to get along with her so much that I'll disbelieve the Bible also. I don't want to get along with her so much that I'll quote from another book just to get along with her. No, I'm sticking and I'm 
staying with the Bible. I'm just like the songwriter. I'll take Jesus for mine. You can have this whole wide world, but I Jesus for mine. Yeah. Yes. How many love the Lord with all your heart? Why don't you hug somebody and tell them I'm staying with the truth. I'm staying with the truth. If I got to fall out with you, I'm staying with the truth. If it separates us, I'm going with God's truth because everything is going down but the word of God. Hollywood, you're going down. Washington, D.C., you're going down. Everything is going down but the word of God. Yeah! serve. Somebody praise him in the house. Somebody glorify him. If you're serious about him, give him praise. I'm going to stop right here. I need just a few people who will say I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing on the scripture. On Christ, solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I'll get along good with the Muslim. But you got to accept that Jesus is law. I'm not going to fight with him if you don't accept him. But he'll never lead me in prayer. Oh, Lord. I'll get along with the yoga people. But I can't do their moves. Because I'm not told. I can't find in scripture. I should do a downward dog. But I can find in scripture to lift my hands. I can find in scripture to lay prostrate before the Lord. I can find in scripture where I'm to dance before Jesus. Can I get a witness? Oh! I can get along with a whole lot of people, but I'll never agree with the atheist just to get along with him and say there is no God. I'll never walk in the coffee shop and blend in by denying my savior and begin to act like a secularist. The devil is a liar. I'm a church of God in Christ preacher. Everywhere I go, I'm saved on vacation. I'm saved on my way downtown. I'm saved on my way uptown. Do I have somebody here who can say I'm saved everywhere I go? Saved at the upper room, but saved on the college campus. Saved here on Sunday morning, but saved at work on Monday morning. Ah, Saved in the church house, but I'm saved at my mama's house. Yeah, yeah, Lord. Somebody ought to praise the Lord and say I'm saved through the storms of life. My soul keeps singing. Save, save. I'm saved. Lift your hands and praise him right now. Save, save. I'm saved. Oh, save, save. Lord, I'm saved. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, saved. I wish I had a praying chance. 
Fred Save Compromise. We'll come together. We'll make peace, but we can't build peace on a lie. Right. You know, folks say, you know, we ought to set aside our differences and work together. My response is always the same. It depends on what the differences are. Because depending upon what the differences are, I can't set them aside. If you ask me to set aside the cross, can't do it. Can't do it. If you ask me, I, I, I was invited one time downtown, TV cameras, to do a talk on saving marriage between a man and a woman. Went down there, and they took us downstairs, and cameras everywhere and uh, the politician who invited me said right before we went on the air now I don't want you guys to talk about scripture but I want you to try to defend this uh, from another viewpoint and and uh, don't want to sound too preachy And uh, when they said that, I'm told by people, I'm told that sometimes my expressions, what I'm feeling, show my face. I don't know because I can't see my face. But I'm told that that happens. So when the man said that, Kevin Daniels, my good friend of the Frederick Douglass Institute, I guess he read my face. And he walked up to me and whispered in my ear, do your thing, preacher. Say what preachers say. Because, I, I, let me tell you what he saw on my face. He saw I got to go. Because the, the, the man just emptied my gun. I'm, I'm not speaking from Confucius point of view. I'm not speaking from the point of view of some humanist, of some secularist. I'm God's man. You knew I was God's man when you asked me to come. God of the Bible. And even though we were there to do a good thing, a politician asked too much. Too much. When the light had that Thursdays, what was it? Relationship Thursdays. Pam and I was a guest one time on there. And, and I, we must have been doing good because they didn't have any problem getting people to call in with questions. The lines were hot during the break. One of them came in and said, listen, Reverend, we'd appreciate it if you uh, not answer every question what the Bible says. So I said, well, but you knew I was a, a Bible preacher when you asked me to come on. So yes, but we have others who have done it and they're scholars and all that and they, and they, they can do it. Well, you know, I, I never been, I used to say, I never claimed to be as smart as those guys. So yeah, I'm, I don't have their intelligence. I, I stick with the Bible. I'm just a dumb preacher. I'm just dumb enough to stick with the Bible. I don't even claim, uh, you know. They can't be with them. Uh, that's, I, that's, I never claim to be that intelligent. I, I, I don't even fool nobody. My, the book for my rule and practice is the Bible. Amen. Well, what is the book you read the most? The Bible? 
Sometimes I'm flying, I sit I'm on the plane, I look at people, they pull out this book, they pull out that book, they look so sophisticated. They I go pull it out the Bible. Black man with the Bible, the Bible, the Bible. And the thing all marked up. But I'm flying, just, I'm, I'm right up there beside them. With the Bible in my hand. Hallelujah. And you think I'm, I'm going to get ashamed of God? So we went, we came from the break. I'm getting ready to pray. We got to go to Roxburgh. We came from the break and we were back on next section. People calling in, asking questions. As God is my witness, I couldn't answer a question. I couldn't say anything. I sat there, I was mute. I was not rebelling. I just had no answers. I didn't even know how to start. I'm so used to saying, well, the Bible says, okay, now I can't say the Bible says. Well, who do I quote? So we went to another break. The man called back and said, go on and use the scripture. <laughs> we went back hard again. I'm ready again. Yes, yes, the Bible. See, what, what's, what, what is my point? Peacemakers. So this, this is why you want to come th this coming Thursday night. I'm going to teach you. See, peacemakers don't make peace at any cost. See, it's interesting, this week, the Lord had me preaching about uh, us being peacemakers. And, and during the convocation, I was preaching that we're troublemakers. So the question is, are we peacemakers or are we troublemakers? We're both. These that have turned the world upside down have come here also, Acts says. Well, sometimes before we can establish peace. There has to be a war. There has to be uh, an establishing of the right foundation. Certain things have to be put in order. And now we have peace on the foundation of Christ. My pastor operated, the late great James Henry Turner, he's in heaven right now, operated on the foundation of the gospel of the gospel. I got, I got all that Bible talk from being under him. That's all he talked about was the Bible. Amen. And could nobody say, the Bible said, like he could. Say to me, he just go way Bible. And while preaching, don't let him hit I heard. One time he was preaching, he was preaching hard, and he stopped, he said, I heard, and then he did it three times in a row. I fell out in the spirit before he could say what he heard. <laughs> I went, oh! It was such good preach. It was so good. I, whatever you heard, I was like this. Just good preaching. We're holding this church built on the foundation of the scriptures. We do not make peace at the expense of compromise. Uh, that's not the way. Parents, to get along with your children, don't let them move in their live-in lover well, well, in your house. She done moved her boyfriend in your house. Now, you're not fussing, but you don't have peace. Y'all might not be arguing, but you don't have peace. Amen. He's going to bring his boyfriend home. And everybody's sitting at the dinner table for Thanksgiving. Everybody's got a heartburn. <laughs> Ain't nobody arguing, but you don't have peace. Mm -mm, mm -mm. When it comes to God's truth, make your stand. Make your stand. And you stay there. You stay there. Because see, God will give you power to outlast the devil. See, some of you brothers, some of you men, uh, some of you older brothers, see, 
Don't let the standard of the church be too high for you. I, I need to go somewhere where it's a little easier. No, you don't. That, that's your first step. Green, that will be your first step to going back into bondage. You don't run from a higher standard. You run toward the standard. Well, I, uh, it's, 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 more to, it's more to my liking. That's the problem. You need to be challenged. How is a man going to be a man and be the man that God would have him to be without being challenged? Amen. Elder Turner was a challenge. You know his style of leadership? You know what his leadership style was? If he's going out that door, this is the way I describe his leadership style. You were welcome to be with him. He'd welcome everybody who wanted to go out that door. But he's going out that door. Now, if you join him in going out the door, you're going, we're going to go out the door together. But you ain't going to stop him from going out that door. I'm his son. I'm going out the door. And you want to join and come up and we're going to follow God and go out the door and be strong men and go forward in the things of God together. Yeah, then, and, 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 and you let the Lord, let yeah, the Lord right. bless you with your conditioning where you can keep the pace. Yeah. See, I'm behind right now with the Lord. The Lord will give you strength to, to catch up, but you got to hang in there. You, you don't drift farther and farther and farther to the back. Next thing you know, there you go out there arm and arm with Masons. Arm and arm with religious folk, but they ain't saved. That's, that's a trick. I'm, I'm talking to somebody. That's a trick of Satan. Man of God, pray for me. I'm closing my Bible so I'll be quiet. Man of God, pray for me. Pray that God make me strong. Pray that the Lord make me a peacemaker. Pray that God. Oh, listen, I can't wait till I, till I get to teaching on, see, when I talk about a peacemaker, being a warrior, see, there are more than one way to fight. See, sometimes you fight by taking down. See, fight is not always aggression. Sometimes fighting is submitting. I'm going to show you some areas of scripture where we are so, it is so in unbelievable that and in Congress with us that we won't even preach it anymore. But it's Bible. Some of us are more interested in being right than making peace. We're more interested in making our point than making peace. More interested in showing someone up than making peace. But I heard Jesus say, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Somebody wave your hand. 